Hey guys, it's Dan with Farmscape Foods and Catering here. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, we've been out with a food truck going to farmers markets and one of the items that we've been preparing is an albacore tuna sandwich. Um, and on that we make our own chili crisp as a garnish. So I figured that might be something pretty interesting for you guys to see. So today, um, this week, that's what I'm going to do for this video. Enjoy. Hey, good looking. What you got cooking? How about cooking something up with me? Hey, sweet baby, don't you think maybe we can find us a brand new recipe? <laughs> to make chili crisp, the first thing you need are chilies. And here what I have this is 75 grams of dried peppers. Um, I'm using about one third hot peppers and the rest are actually um, beautiful uh smoked paprika peppers that we get locally um, and we use that as a garnish for our brunches that we do with blue grouse on top of our bennies um, but since those aren't happening right now i'm willing to use those up for some chili crisp um, and this is a um, a nice way to add sweetness to this without actually having to add sugar um, so that's why i like to do it i'm aiming for kind of mild to medium in heat um, but as you're choosing your peppers just taste them when they're dry that'll uh, give you a really good idea of how hot your chili crisp is going to end up Next, you're going to need three shallots sliced thinly, and then I use spring garlic here. It's four stalks of spring garlic sliced into rounds. Uh, if you don't have that, just use um, uh, four uh, large garlic cloves, and that can just be um, sliced. Two tablespoons of fermented soybeans. This is um, about three grams of kelp and five grams of bonito flakes. This is in place of um, MSG, so this is a good way to add umami to this without needing to use MSG if you don't want to. Um, personally, I don't see anything wrong with that, but this is um, what I have on hand, so that's what I'm using. Um, six thick slices of ginger, 30 grams of crushed, uh, salted, and roasted soybeans, and then a t teaspoon of sesame oil. And this is what you're going to need to make chili crisp. First step here is going to be um, roasting these and then pounding them into um, a kind of a coarse powder here that we'll use at the end of the recipe. Um, so next thing you'll see is um, just me roasting these guys up. All right guys, so I have the peppers roasting away with about three quarters of a cup of kosher salt. That's just to help um, distribute the heat while we're doing this. We don't want to scorch our peppers. So it's been going for about five minutes on, on a medium heat. We want to um, see a little bit of color. You can see it's starting to get some color there. Um, that's that's pretty much what we're looking for there. As it cools, it's going to be really easy to grind um, into the consistency that we want. So I'm going to let it go for a couple more minutes here and then sift out the salt and let it cool. Um, and then we'll grind it up. All right, guys, so the next step here is um, getting our shallots and garlic cooking in oil and so for oil um, what I'm using is vegetable oil just because I want a neutral oil for the way I'm doing it um, I would also uh, peanut oil would be great for this corn oil would be okay um, but just to be as accommodating as possible we're doing it with vegetable oil um, grapeseed oil would also be a nice choice here so you have some flexibility here I'm using vegetable oil um, we're gonna add a lot of flavor to that so um, starting with our shallots and our garlic and really you can start this at a pretty low heat um, it's about two cups of oil or a cup and a half of oil here and we're just gonna cook this until we get a nice brown color on it the idea is to release all the moisture from this and then we'll strain it from the oil um, and we'll keep cooking other products in there afterwards but for this we want to crisp these guys up um, take them out, let them dry, and then we'll add them into the end. So we'll let these guys cook down. Probably add a little bit more oil to this, maybe another half cup or so. There we go. Now they have plenty of room and we'll let it cook down.
so our camera kind of jumped here on us, but um, the, the shallots now are a nice, deep brown color, and that's what we want. That's what we need for it to crisp up once we removed it from the oil. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to strain this and then let them sit over a paper towel um, just to crisp up, and then we'll add them back at the end. Um, so I'm going to do that real quick. All right, so the next step is adding in our slices of ginger, and we're just going to fry these guys um, for a few minutes, um, probably two or three minutes. We're gonna remove these from the oil after we've cooked them, um, but this is just to get some nice nice flavor into the oil. All right, so these guys have been simmering away in that oil for a few minutes. Next step I'm gonna add is, um, next step is to add the fermented soybean. And it's probably gonna pop a little bit as it goes in. What we wanna do now is remove all the moisture that we can from this. So this now has been simmering for about five minutes or so. Now we're gonna add our kombu um, and uh, bonito flake powder. Stir to incorporate that. Then we can add our soybeans. And then at this stage, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this off the heat, and then I'm gonna show you um, how to combine this with everything else that we've prepped today. So our dried peppers and our fried shallots and our fried garlic. All right guys, so we have our oil mixture here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna combine this, which is our now um, crushed peppers um, that we roasted off earlier. So I just ground these down in a mortar and pestle. This is the consistency that you're looking for. Um, obviously it's not, um, you know, it's, it's not super consistent, um, but we want that. We want some of the, um, the powdered peppers to kind of melt into the oil. And then we want the seeds and the chunks um, in there for what really gives us our crisp. Um, so we're gonna add that. Add in our dr uh, fried garlic and fried shallots. And then finally, our one teaspoon of sesame oil. And we add that at the end just because we don't want to scorch this oil. It gets really bitter if you do that. And now we're just going to give it a mix, give it a taste, and then it should be good to go. You can see it's quite thick. I like it that way. Um, but as it sits, a little bit more oil is going to kind of get absorbed and then released again as it cools. So you can see it's quite pasty. You can see the, the color of the oil now has changed. And yeah, we're going to give that a taste and finish it off and it should be good. That's it. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you uh, do like our content, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see um, our new videos as they come out. Um, make sure you also follow us on social media, on Facebook and on Instagram, at Farmscape Foods, so you can find out where we're gonna be at each week with the food truck. Uh, normally that's either gonna be at the Squamalt Farmer's Market on Thursdays, Duncan Farmer's Market on Saturdays, and the Cedar Farmer's Market on Sundays, with some exceptions. Um, so make sure you uh, follow us and find out where we're gonna be so you can try some of our food and um, check out the link in the description below to the cow op. Um, so again, you can get some of our frozen food delivered straight to your door through the cow op. We're still doing that. Um, you can also do that um, in the link in the description below to our online ordering website. Um, so you can get some of our frozen food delivered that way to you. And um, yeah, don't forget, no matter how you do it, support local. Thanks guys.